this Talk Point Knowledge Series. I'm Simon Ewing Jarvie. And I'm Heather Roy. Today we're looking at the New Zealand political spectrum, and uh, let's begin by looking at the parties that are in Parliament now. Heather? After the 2017 election, uh, we saw, saw fewer political parties in the New Zealand Parliament. The government was formed by the Labour Party and the New Zealand First Party, who joined together in a formal coalition, with support from the Green Party, who are providing confidence and supply. Right, and over in opposition, we find the National Party and one ACT MP. Now, prior to that election, the Māori Party were also in Parliament, and the Opportunities Party, or TOP, contested for the first time. Neither of these two made it, but we expect to see them back at subsequent elections. Now, let's move to the political spectrum as it's often portrayed. The political spectrum is usually described by media and others uh, in this way, in terms of left and right. The terms left and right, uh, when you look back in history, actually came from France, where if you sat on the left-hand side of the president, you belonged to the party of movement. On the right-hand side was the party of order. So it described where you sat in the legislature. So how does that relate to our political scene in New Zealand? Well, today the terms left and right, or left wing and right wing, describe political ideologies of individuals or parties. Uh, so on the right are parties who defend property rights and capitalism. They're often considered to be conservative. Hold on, you're not suggesting that Genghis Khan is a defender of property rights, are you? Uh, no, he was much more likely to steal your property. But history writes him up as someone of the right persuasion. Okay. On the left are parties who seek social justice through redistributive social and economic policies, and they're often described as liberals. An example from history is this fellow, Lenin, who was the Russian communist revolutionary politician. Okay, uh, what about parties that uh, fall in the centre? So the in-between parties, or those that sit between left and right, are considered to be centrist or moderate in their views. For example, Peter Dunn's United Future Party was considered to be in the centre of the New Zealand political spectrum. Right. OK, well, let's clear the decks. Here's the spectrum again. Think about National, Labour, New Zealand First, Greens and ACT. And you might want to pause the video for a minute or two and have a go at positioning those parties where you think they sit on the spectrum. Now we're going to show you our, our idea. So the top point view of where the political parties sit are this. A national is on the centre right of the political spectrum and Labour on the centre left. The Green Party is always described as being a party of the left and the ACT Party a party of the right. New Zealand First sits slightly to the right of the spectrum uh, because of the conservative nature of its policies and views. Right, so is this the best way to describe the political spectrum? No, it's a very simplistic way of describing where the policies and, and ideas that come from parties are, but a, a much more accurate way is this. We call it the actual political spectrum, and it looks at a two-dimensional view. So the x-axis um, relates to matters affecting the economy. If you look over on the left-hand side, you'll see that we've described things as socialist or state-run, right through to the right-hand side of the graph where the capitalist or free market ideas exist. The y-axis describes matters affect affecting society. So at the top of the graph are the liberal views, and we've described those as challenging the status quo, right down to the bottom of the graph where conservative or traditional views exist. OK, well, it's your turn to have a go if you'd like. You can pause the video and see if you can map the New Zealand political parties onto this spectrum. And here's our take. So again, the talk point view puts National and the Labour Party firmly in the centre of this graph. And there's a, a reasonable amount of overlap between these parties, despite the fact that they might not like you to think that way. Uh, if you look in uh, the way parliamentary voting exists, about 75% of the time, Labour and National vote the same way on issues. The ACT Party and the Green Party are both are liberal parties, so they're liberal when it comes to their views of what happens in society rather than the economy. The Greens, however, are quite socialist in their outlook, so they sit over on the, the left-hand side, and the ACT Party has a free market or a capitalist view of society, so it sits over on the right. 
New Zealand first is down towards the bottom of the graph because it, of its very conservative approach. Hmm, that's different to where it was before. So they're right conservative on things like immigration, but um, things like super gold cards and that, redistributing wealth, subsidising visits to GPs, that puts them at the socialist end, I guess. Yeah, that's right. And they are trying to appeal to a very broad audience. Uh, but it highlights also the difference between that very linear way of describing political parties and this much more appropriate way by separating the economic and societal views. Great. Well, that's all for today. Thanks for watching. And uh, that's just a small sample of what happens in a full day experiential learning program, Lobby Talk. If you're keen to be a more effective lobbyer in the New Zealand political scene, give us a shout. You can find us on social media shown here. You can email us, go to our website, or uh, follow our, subscribe to our channel on YouTube to find out when the next in the info series comes.